It's been a big year and I've learned a lot about teaching, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about my journey so far to becoming a physics teacher. We'll start by talking about my teaching philosophy. Now there's one really big part of my teaching philosophy and that is play and fun. Because I figure if my students are having fun in the classroom, they'll enjoy learning. And if I'm having fun in the classroom, I will stay in this profession a bit longer. Another big important part about fun and play is brain development. So what does play do for the brain? Well, a lot. Nothing lights up the brain like play. Three-dimensional play fires up the cerebellum, puts a lot of impulses into the frontal lobe, the executive portion, helps contextual memory to be developed, and, uh, and, and, and. That guy was Dr. Stuart Brown, and he's done a lot of research into play, brain development, and learning. Uh, and there's a lot of other information you can find out there. But it's really interesting, and it's something that I've included as references to most of my assignments this year. Another thing that I really like playing with is my technology. And so technology makes up another big part of my teaching philosophy. This tablet was given to me by an old friend of mine who recently passed away. She had it sitting in a cupboard and was doing nothing, and she thought that I could do something with it. And initially, I didn't have a use for it, but at my most recent placement, it became apparent that this was a really important tool. Uh, being a Microsoft tablet, it means that it integrates very well with pretty much any classroom you go into. And it allowed me to be mobile. I could wander around the classroom. Uh, and that's really handy for classroom management. That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. So yeah, I can wander around the class. I can see when someone's messing around. I can see if someone's on YouTube or playing a game instead of doing their lesson. But I can also use it to live annotate. And an example from my recent placement was that I had, a, I had the students doing a, an activity where they had, to, um, they had to record data. They had to record the number of notes in a music sheet. And they worked in groups, and then the idea was that they move around the room and get the information from the other groups. Now, this went really well, but towards the end of the lesson, there were some students that were lagging behind. So by, the, by, the, by me being mobile and able to walk around the classroom and talk to each of the groups, I was able to get all of their data and start live annotating it onto the board. And those students that were struggling to catch up could copy it straight down from the board. And another big benefit of this was that I was able to uh, record this, save it onto Compass, and if there were any students that weren't there or if there were students that lost the, their data, then they could download it from Compass the next day to use it. Another really cool piece of technology that I've found out about this year were interactive simulations. We talked a lot about these last semester, but they were still something that was new to me. And one of my big takeaways was to make sure that they value add to your lesson. You don't want to just use them as a novelty. There may be some of your experiments where you can alter variables that you wouldn't be able to do in the classroom. And there might be other experiments where you can compare the results from the experiment with those found in a simulation. But another really handy way that you can use simulations is when you're teaching online. So that takes me to the MVS. Now I've talked about the MVS a lot this, this year, ever since I started at it. But one of the reasons that it's so cool is that it gives you seven guaranteed opportunities to teach VCE physics students. And that's where I've gotten the most experience talking with VCE students. And what I've really enjoyed is pushing the boundaries of online teaching. Where we were at the start of the year, was using lightboard technology. And this is what it looked like. It was, you had to stand in a dark room wearing dark clothes while the presentation was projected over you. And it's quite effective. And one of the most important reasons that this is effective is because you can emote and you can gesture and you can point to things. But I've taken it further. And this presentation is an example of that. I can now stand 
well lit, wearing whatever colour clothes I want, and I can still gesture to wherever I want on the board, and of course I can annotate onto the screen. So it's been a lot of fun and I'm still learning new ways of being nerdy online. But one of the really cool things is that it's really developed my knowledge domains with respect to TK and TPK. So Shulman's knowledge domains mostly talk about pedagogical knowledge and content knowledge and knowledge of the learner and things like that. And one of the most important ones, arguably, is PCK, pedagogical content knowledge. And I've been working on that. But more recently, there's been an addition to the model of technological knowledge, and it fits as a Venn diagram like this. So you end up with te technological, technological pedagogical knowledge and technological content knowledge and technological pedagogical content knowledge. And because that is such a mouthful to say, we just call it TPAC. Now, my life prior to coming to learn to be a teacher, I played with a lot of technology. It was just something that I liked to do. So my technolo technological knowledge was quite big. My pedagogical knowledge, I had a lot of intuitive ways as from being a parent, from being involved with the Scouts, from coaching basketball. All of these natural ways that I teach, I have found out over the course are different pedagogies. So I've got a reasonable amount of pedagogical knowledge. And what I've been really working on with the MVS is this technological pedagogical knowledge. Now, where I have to go in the future is I really need to bring up my content knowledge. My content knowledge is still a bit rusty. It's been a long time since I've studied some of these topics and on some of the topics I've never studied. So my content knowledge looks a little bit smaller. But yeah, this is kind of where I'm at and in the future, develop that content knowledge and I'll really have a nice big rich T pack as displayed here. All right, another thing that I want to work on is flipping the classroom. Now, flipping the classroom is something that I've only recently become aware of. And here's a reasonably recent article that I've started to read. What I kind of understand is that it's about putting the teacher led information or lower order work as homework and then freeing up space in the classroom for higher order. Um, rich, fun activities in the classroom. And this links, links back to my teaching philosophy. So if this is something that I can do, it's something that I really want to explore. Um, not only does it free up time in the classroom for fun activities, but it gives you the opportunity to develop a library of teaching material that students can access whenever they want. They might want to access a video that you did as a bit of revision, or they might, have, might want to watch some videos from classes that are, that are ahead so that they can uh, read ahead on the information. But hey, technological content knowledge, I mean, come on, this is what I want to do. So thanks for listening. Hit the like and subscribe, just kidding. Um, thanks very much.